we go. Do 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 Can't get comfortable. There we go. Feed her up. Do 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 Welcome everyone, and it's P4 Ratchet here, and we are today doing something a little bit different. We're doing a Let's Play video, and obviously the game is Crash Bandicoot. Why Crash Bandicoot? Well, um, it's not because he started becoming relevant again as of last week. Not because of that, it's because I wanted to do something on the Naughty Dog games. Start Well, Naughty Dog on PlayStation, that is, because, you know, they've had... At least a game that's not been on PlayStation. Really old, don't worry about it. Because um, by as far as I'm concerned, they're the best. They always have been. And Crash Bandicoot was one of our earliest experiences of the PlayStation. Oh, here's the opening scene. Bandicoot will be my general, and he will lead my Cortex Commandos to world domination. This time I found Rocket Raccoon. Rocket Raccoon, my Cortex Commandos are ready to fight. Rocket Raccoon, my Cortex Commandos I don't like all this voice. It's very generic. It's not evil enough. I'm so glad they changed it. Yeah, hey, voice acting is nice though, isn't it? Reject the bandicoot. Reject. Uh... Right, what's with the female bandicoot? Like, did he make him a girlfriend? Is the she just plan B? Why... You know, what's going on? I don't understand. Why would you make him a girlfriend? Maybe he just really wanted him the head of his army. I don't know. But anyway, here we go. It's Crash Bandicoot. Here's the beautiful island, the island number one. I don't think the, uh, these islands have names. Very detailed, though. Look at that. Lovely place. We'll ignore the fact that it's full of hostile critters, and we'll go straight to End Sanity Beach, which, by the way, there's a temple there. Oh yeah, you climb a temple in Insanity Beach, of course. Anyway, iconic first Crash Bandicoot level with this lovely scene. It was put in the Uncharted 4 trailer, I believe. Here we go, he's up, he's awake, he's ready to go. I don't know how he found out that his girlfriend was in trouble, but it's time to go save her. Oh, I knocked that up. Do, 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 do. So, you know, back in 1996, games were just really starting to hit the um, 3D mark. So this is one of the early ones. Look at that. Look at that background. It's very detailed, these Crash Bandicoot games. I always find the graphics don't really look particularly bad, despite their age, because they own it. They own that little cartoon vibe. I mean, like, Crash looks a bit stupid. Look at him. Look at how awkward he looks. But the rest of it, it looks pretty nice. Even now. Old, yes. But um, it doesn't look terrible. It looks better than, say, Mario 64. But we can't really compare the two because Mario 64 is an actual 3D game. Because Crash Bandicoot is kind of just <coughs> pretending to be one. Just because in Crash Bandicoot, it's not just to the left and right you can move. You can move forward and back. <gasps> Oh my god. Just imagine to an audience in 1996, used to Mario and Sonic on their 2D planes, and then this comes along, and you're like, whoa. My three year old nephew, I had gotten to play this recently, and he usually plays Crash 2 on his dad's phone and just presses forward, jumps when he needs to. Now it's how to do the spin dash, by the way. Yeah, triple mask. Woo! Woo! Kill everything! Kill the turtles! Woo! Yeah! Oh, this is cool. Anyway, yeah, no. Um, and he can do Sonic fine. But he, I got on this, and he got confused. Like, at this crossroad here, he was, he just he just wanted to keep moving forward and didn't, couldn't figure out why Crash wouldn't move. Because you got to go left and right. Crazy. Right. This is the... So, this is a perfect example. You get... You get the nice, you get used to the mechanics, it lets you go straight forwards, and then it, uh, the game teaches you to do left and rights at the temple bit. And then here is where it teaches you, actually, there's quite a lot of secrets to be had in this here game. Oh, do I try? I might as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
Seven. And no! Missed one! No! Yes! Woo! Oh god. I hated that when I was little. It's like why? Why is that there? And you see, it's a perfect example of what the game's gonna be. The challenge it will pose, the looks it will have. I mean look how luscious this level is. It's so vibrant, there's little butterflies or dragonflies or whatever flying around. It really says something for the game. It says this is a new generation of gaming and we are here now. Woo! And that's the first level of Crash Bandicoot. What a level, eh? And would you look at that, a gem already. Ta-da! Oh, that's an awkward face crash. Very awkward. I read somewhere they spent a lot of time... Uh, they spent a lot of time using... They used a lot of facial expressions for Crash in this game. Um, because they, they wanted to see what would work for the character. Which is why we see a much smoother Bandicoot later on in Crash 2 and 3. Because they just play with a lot of things here. Because Crash's running face does look a bit orcs, doesn't it? Oh god, I said orcs. That's awkward. Anyway, level two, Jungle Rollers. The not so fun level, but it's kind of teaching you more mechanics, like, well, we're already doing the jump pads, and Aku Aku asks. Which I forget, when did Aku Aku become a character? Was it Crash 2 or 3? Anyway, the first TNT. Don't stay too close, you too blow! Boom! Kill some skunks. Yeah, we're now in the thick of the jungle now. Crash is definitely lost. And he still doesn't really know what he's doing, because... I assume he just thinks, Ah, oh, my girlfriend's stuck in Cortex's lab, I'll go save her. Because Crash isn't very bright, mind. Because you can see, like, look at his facial expression. He's... They're very, um... They're very awkward. No, I keep using the word awkward. That's awkward. Stop it. Uh... They're just very... Think of a word for it to use. Oh, whoops, whoops. Um, jagged, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, use the mask to destroy the boxes. That lovely little room houses a few little gems. Kill all the skunk at once. Bam. Yeah, the gems in this game are a real nasty little treat, but this is also a nasty little thing. Now this teaches you to be weary. Oh, no, 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 ow, ow, didn't do that, ow. Poor Crash. Yeah, I'm going to have to get spinning all the lives and masks away. But you can't tell him what to do, because he's just like, no, 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 I got this, I got this. He's like that. Anyway, uh, here we go, bonus round. Do, 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 do. I like how they, they keep that little crash life icon throughout the series. I like that. Bit of continuity there. And this highlights one of the more frustrating aspects of the original Crash Bandicoot. The fact is, you have to complete these stages, which means getting the three tokens to get to them in order to save the game. Which is really cruel, I'm just going to point out. Uh... Because, I mean, you put in all that effort. The latest stages are so hard. It takes forever to save. Anyway. Mind you. Oops. Do, 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 do. Get through the rollers. Jump on the skunk. Kill the plants. And away we go. Happy days, Crash. And now he's going to tell me I missed something. Great. But you missed three boxes. Yep. That's the nature of the game. So if anyone playing later crashes will know, you can just get the gem by getting all the boxes. But oh no, 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 in this crash you've got to get the boxes and not die. Which, later on, is real hard. Anyway, the great gate. Now, anyone who might have played Zumbinis before, you know, that well-known game Zumbinis, 
This always reminds me of that level where you, the little squirrel man wants you to um, say he's got room in this hotel, but you have to figure out which rooms are the right rooms until it's too late, and then he locks you out for the night in the cold. That guy. These gates remind me of those hotel rooms. Nice little, very obscure reference there, I guess. Thank you. Ooh, it's a very hostile environment here. Poor Crash. He didn't ask for any of this. Oh, these platforms. For a young one, that thing, so annoying. When I was little, and I was six years old, I could never do them. I was just, just falling. I suppose it's later, the, the next gate level. We'll, uh, we'll talk about them more then. Ah! He's got a very mechanical feel about him, Crash. I'm not really sure if he's supposed to be mechanical or not. Like, he should, he, that, that, that little death scene would suggest he was a robot, but he's definitely not. Anyway. It's not like the later Crash Bandicoots, he has one death animation, whereas in the others, like, dying quite funny. There we go. Right, okay. See these bonus icons at the bottom there? When I was little, I didn't realise this was Crash's girlfriend. Like, if you if you take her hair there, and imagine it as a little wooden board, then what you're left with is a really ugly monkey without any hair. And for some reason, that's what I thought the image was. Ugly monkey without any hair. Um, it took me years and years and years to figure out that it was Crash's girlfriend. Yeah, optical illusions, folks. Get the life. I wonder why this gate's here anyway. Ah, it's these people. I feel sorry for these people. Like, why are they fighting Crash? What do they like? Is this their home? Do they think of him as an intruder? Are they Cortex's people? I don't think they're Cortex's people because they're not like biological experiments, are they? So they're probably just protecting their land, and they think Crash is a threat. And Crash is just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Who knows? Bonus stage. Come on, it must have been his girlfriend all along. Because I mean, these are. What the hell? I mean, only Crash's girlfriend can take him to these heights. Yeah, yeah. There she is, no longer in captivity, all happy. Only illusion though, Crash. It's time to move on. Yeah, there's the Cortex and Rio stages later. They're really hard. It's hard even getting to them, because you... The levels are hard, and then you die, and then you lose your chance, and oh, that's the end. And these gems. Oh, the gems. Like, it seems every gem you collect has a place in another level where it should appear in, but there's nothing to tell you which where level they're going to, to show up in later. So it's one of the most frustrating... How do you keep track of them all? Do you first have to not die in a level, and then you have to figure out where the next gems are, and sometimes a level, you can finish it and think you got all the boxes, and then it turns out you need another gem to get to another... Like, this game is just hard. It's very... It's, it's cruel how much information it doesn't give you. Anyway, moving on. It's boulder time. Now, for anybody uh, with their PS4s recently, they may have played this level for some reason. So I shan't say any more, because it might be considered spoiler territory. But anyway, the boulders. I'm pretty sure every Naughty Dog game, you get chased by something. And Crash Bandicoot starts it all with boulders. Why the boulders are chasing him? I don't know. Angry boulders? Angry personified boulders? I don't know. I mean, a smart person would just jump into the trees on the side of the path, but... I suppose Crash isn't very smart. Maybe it's just these village people trying to kill him. Maybe that's it. That sounds more likely. Yeah, they're not just boulders with minds of their own. Poor Crash. Yeah, and that spoiler zone. I think it's this level, but it might be the other boulder level. But regardless. Oh, 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 no. Oh, Crash, you poor thing. Yeah, it might be this level. It might be the other boulder level. But I remember, it's just... Like, 
you, it's really hard to finish on the PS4. I don't understand why. Like, I, you got to it and you're like, yeah, I got this. I've been playing this all my life. And then it just, you can't do it. And I, I don't know. Maybe the, my brother thinks that you can't complete it, but I, I don't know about that. Anyway. Run, Crash, run! Oh, safe for another day. No gem, but we're safe. We're safe. We're cool. We are cool, Crash. So as you see, we're moving into village territory, which obviously means that um, there's a boss fight coming up soon. Ooh. But first, we've got to make it up the river. So I like the islands. They're very detailed. It gives you a sense of purpose. Like, I know later Crash Bandicoot, they have the warp rooms and it's really easy to get between levels and you can choose which level you kind of want to do in what order. But I just like these islands. It might be linear, but I, I just like giving the game that sense of location. So a lot of the early levels of Crash 1 are jungle based, obviously. The first island is very tropical. And that plant is slippery, and that tr tree trunk is slippery and wants to take me away. I wish all rivers had giant leaves to cross on. Wouldn't that be nice? There we go, there's the ugly boiling egg. And, oh, cool, cool, has gone. I, I can wonder what I want about the... Uh, a cool coup when he becomes an actual character, but the idea is we just keep going through all the Naughty Dog games, so eventually that will come to light on its own. Haha, <laughs> take that plant. No food for you. Oh. Whoops. I guess I was pressing forward too much. So, what's there to say about these games? They feel very rigid. It's kind of... You know how the first Mario, Super Mario Brothers, you kind of... You can't almost make a ledge. You either make it or don't. You can't, like, get a little bit of the character on that ledge. Like in later games. So, like, you can see, like, a little bit of, the, of, of his foot can get on there, but the game mechanics weren't allowed and all that. It, it's kind of like this in Crash Bandicoot, whereas if you don't land directly where you're supposed to be going, you, you fall through. It's very... It's almost like, at times, it can feel very much like you're on a grid. And to be honest, when you think of it, every of it, all of it as a grid and not as a, a true open 3D space, it's actually a lot easier to play through. But there you go. No gem for you today. Bear in mind, there's probably a secret gem at the end of there that wants to take you away. Anyway, here we are, the first boss, Papu Papu, who I'm going to guess has nothing to do with Cortex. He's just an angry tribesman. And uh, you, well, maybe why is he angry? Well, maybe it's because Crash Bandicoot's just walked in on his nap. Maybe that's it. Still, scary. He's just a man protecting his people. And he's about to get stomped on by a bandicoot. Oh, I thought you had to wait. <laughs> you can see his bum crack. Ah, oh. ladies and gentlemen, that's a death on the very first boss. Oh, I still get two of two of twos. That's nice. Oh, come on! I don't think I've ever been in this boss that long to hear that little music bit. Ooh. Sugar? Ah! 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 It's because I'm playing and talking. Like, I already did a test run of this and it didn't go this badly. It went rather well, actually. And, uh, so I apologise. Maybe I'm just trying to talk too much. Die, papu papu! This is what you get for protecting your people. Woo! Yeah! 
And there you go. That is the first, well, the opening Crash Bandicoot, all the way up to the first boss. And uh, that's as far as uh, we're going to go today. But thanks for watching, and come back soon for more Crash Bandicoot goodness.